Hey what is up guys my name is Tanmay Sakpal and I'm back with another video tutorial on boolean algebra logic gates and digital electronics as a whole so in this video tutorial we'll be studying the concept of flip flops and latches and we'll just going to go about an introduction to this sequential type of circuit so in the previous video tutorial we saw what sequential circuits are as a whole and how they are different from combinational circuits so if you have missed that video you can check it out and with that being said let's get started with today's topic so in this video tutorial as i mentioned as per the topic we're just going to go ahead with the basics of flip flop and the concept of latches we're theoretically going to see what exactly happens and we'll also see an example which is a very basic example of a one bit memory latch okay now i know this latch and flip flop might sound a little confusing in the start but it is a very easy concept and once you see this entire video the idea and the theoretical working behind the flip flop will be very clear so make sure you watch this video till the end okay so let's first start off with a few points and basic definitions of flip flop by the way flip flop is a sequential circuit so sequential circuits usually have a certain feedback mechanism wherein the output not only depends on the current input but also depends on the past output so that acts as a feedback so that's what sequential circuits are and that's how they are different from combinational circuits so coming back to basics of flip flop now in digital computers there are devices that store information right so if you have a laptop or your computer you have a hard disk you have a memory and it stores information right so even if you shut down your pc or laptop and when you restart it your files that are saved are always going to be present right so there is some mechanism and there are some circuits and devices inside your pc that store and hold this data right so basically a flip flop is a binary storage device now it can store binary bits either 0 or 1 now since we are dealing with digital data we know digital data is all binary right so it is 0 or 1 so a flip flop basically is the most smallest element of a data storage circuit so it has two stable states which is high and low and that is why it is also called as a bi stable multi vibrator and by multi vibrator i mean it flips and flops between the two states that is high and low and what main property it has is it has the property to remain in one state indefinitely until it is directed by an input signal to switch over to the other state which means that as long as you do not change the input or you have a particular input the output or the state of this device that is the flip flop is always going to be constant which means that it can hold a particular output and ultimately which means that it can hold certain data Okay so how does this work so basically flip flop works on the concept of latch and latch is sort of like the most elementary concept that you need to understand basically flip flop act as a latch and the word latch itself means to latch on to a particular value which means to hold a particular value that's why it is associated with memory storage device and that's why flip flops are also at times called as latches so don't confuse between the two they are mostly the same so let's understand a case over here now you can see i have already drawn a diagram so these are the two not gates okay now we've already talked about basic logic gates in this entire playlist series if you have missed that video you can check it out in this playlist and i'll also drop a card so basically what a not gate does is it inverts the input it is also known as an inverter so it's also called as an inverter so if you input 0 the output will be 1 and if input is 1 the output will be zero so that's how an inverter works so here you can see i have a specific arrangement of two not gates we have inputs a and b and we have output q and q bar so these are essentially complement of each other and i'll tell you why you can see that the output of first not gate so this is not gate 1 and this is not gate 2 so the output of not gate 1 is being fed back as the input over here to b okay similarly the output of not gate 2 is being fed back as the input of a so this is where that sequential feedback mechanism comes into picture. and this is at the very simplest level of understanding so why do we do this let's see how this works so say for example right now the circuit does not have any power and we are powering it on for the first time so let's say a initially is zero okay so let me just write down a b we'll write down q and q bar as well so we are assuming a is equal to zero so what happens a is input as zero over here and since this is a not gate we get zero complement which is equal to 1 so q becomes 1 right so q becomes 1 now this q we can see is fed back again to b so now b has become 1 now when we apply 1 to the not gate 2 it again inverts it so 1 complement is equal to 0 so q bar automatically becomes 0 and b has become 1 now again this q 0 is being fed back as a so again zero is fed over here for the second time we get one over here as the output again this one is fed back for the second time to the b and then again we take complement of one we get back zero again and this process continues indefinitely which means that we are always going to get output as one and zero so always input is going to be zero one and the output is going to be one zero so this will happen until and unless we have powered on the circuit so this means that the output is maintaining states 
so this is the basic mechanism of a latch this is a one bit memory storage latch and the reason why it is one bit and not two you might be wondering there are two outputs right so it should be storing two but then you can see that these two are just complement to each other and they are the same just that they are the opposite to each other so say for example you want to store one so you will be storing it as q but then say for example you want to delete that memory so you just take complement and that becomes zero so that memory can have two states that is one and zero that's how it works so now you must be wondering how how do we change these values so now right now in this device or in this circuit arrangement we do not have the facility to change the input or to change the output according to our needs because this is the very simple example of a latch in further tutorials when we go ahead with the flip flops that is the type of flip flops there will be cases wherein depending upon what we give as an input and the previous state the output would reflect right now it is just holding these values now say for example again we are starting this latch for the first time and in this case for the first time a is 1 okay so we are considering a is 1 so again we are starting the entire circuit for the first time we have just connected and we've, we are powering a as 1 so in that case case 1 becomes 0 over here right 1 complement becomes 0 let me use another marker if you want ok so let's say this time a is equal to 1 so again a complement becomes 0 so this time q becomes 0 this q is again fed back as input to b so b becomes 0 and taking complement by not gate 2 0 becomes 1 and q bar becomes 1 this time so this time b is 0 q is 0 and q bar becomes 1 and again this cycle continues throughout indefinitely until and unless we've powered the circuit so again 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 and this goes on till the circuit is powered or till we want the circuit to work so this is why we call it as a memory device because it holds on to these values indefinitely or as long as we want and right now this is a very basic level so we do not have a control over what to store but we have a basic memory mechanism wherein it is holding those values so this was the concept of one bit memory latch and this is the underlying principle of the working of the further flip flops that we'll see in this entire tutorial playlist so we have different types of flip flops like sr jk t d master slave and so on so there are many variants of the flip flops depending upon the circuit arrangement but the underlying principle is going to be the same that is it is going to hold a by stable value which can act as a storage device so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept of a basic latch and the underlying principle of how flip-flops work and yes in further video tutorials we'll also see the different types of flip-flops so if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel make sure you subscribe so that you'll get notified whenever i upload those videos so that's it for this video guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace